Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, we have finally got a break in the weather over these last, wow, three to four weeks. It has just been so wet, raining and everything else. So what I thought I would do was now just quickly take the opportunity to let you know how we've been organizing our biochar for our comfrey tea. And once this is inoculated, we can then put that into our um, vegetable garden as a bit of a test to see how things are going. Now, it's been well, quite a period of time, um, but what I have been doing is thinking about how I'm gonna be organizing this biochar. Now, since we've been having all this terrible weather, it didn't excite me too much about coming outside and organizing a 44 gallon metal drum, lighting a fire and then using all that charcoal to put into our biochar. So I thought there's got to be a better way rather than standing outside. And I reckon I've done it. Well, this is what I have been doing. So we're lucky here at Fat Cow Farm where we've got our oven, which is uh, wood fired and so is our heating source. So we've got all our charcoal and, and everything else in the fires. So what I've been doing is not every day, but probably about every fourth day, I've been cleaning out our oven and also our heater. And I'm getting left with this biochar. Now, this will take a little bit longer than organizing a mass production um, 44 gallon drum and, and taking that charcoal from there. But what I have been doing is, as you can see, I've got all my charcoal and potash and things like that from the two, um, or the, the cooking source and also our heating source, and I've been adding it to our tea. Now, because this is going to be, or what's been happening is that this has been periodic, it will take a little bit longer, mainly because of the amount of charcoal and potash and things like that that um, we're building up. So th that is taking a little bit more longer time. But also too, what's happening is that, you know, every third or fourth day, I'm adding this little, um, or my, this is my wood, um, uh, wood collection for, for the evening, for the heater and also for the oven. So what's happening now is that every time I add a new source of charcoal into our bio tea, um, or our, our, our comfrey tea, we have to let that inoculate for around about four weeks. So it is a little bit longer running, but I'm thinking that as a part of a, a byproduct of our heat source and also our cooking, let's use it. So this is the plan that we've sort of come, um, come to. Now, like I was saying is that, you know, I've been filling this up they all, these charcoal bits just go straight into that tub. But you need to remember that this probably won't be the end. I've probably got about another, I don't know, let's say another two weeks of heating and, and cooking that I'll add that into our comfrey tea. And at that point, we still need to give that inoculation period of around about that, you know, three to four weeks. So. I thought I would just take this, this chance to let you know what I've been doing to making up my biochar, um, but it is a little bit longer in process. If you could, if you, you know, really at the end of the day, if you had your 44 gallon drum and you had some pretty good weather and, and everything else and you can make up a, a bulk amount of charcoal, that certainly is the, the probably more efficient way of doing it. But because of the weather and you know, it's, it's pretty damn cold here at Fat Cow Farm. <clears throat> I thought I would do it this way. So all I've been doing is, like I said, I've been taking out all my charcoal and potash, and I'm adding everything in here. Because remembering, well, when I, the research that I've been doing is, we still have to break this down and, and you know, so this is all just pure carbon just pure carbon straight into my drum so 
I've got potash, I've got everything going on in here. Now the worst thing is, when, when I add this, I can hear it sizzling. This one's still a little bit warm. The worst part about it is I have to stir it. So and stirring up that comfrey mm. is not a, far, a favorite part of my day. So I haven't brought that with me, but let me quickly go get a stick. I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon. All right, so I've now transferred all my carbon, um, charcoal, potash, and I'm putting everything in here. So what, what I'm finding is that as I'm adding it, it's getting to a thicker consistency. Um, I was really hoping that the smell would start petering down with the charcoal being involved, but yeah, that hasn't quite happened yet. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty full on. But what I'm, I'm thinking is that this is going to be more of a, a liquid mud per se. Um, especially with a lot of that potash and stuff being in there. Now, I don't know if this is the, the right way to do it, but in theory, I, I can see that it's going to work. So we're also going to have the charcoal, which is all inoculated. We're going to have a mud sauce or a slurry that is highly um, inoculated with the comfrey tea being as a part of that um, put and then put sort of putting it in in rows in between vegetables in the um, in the hoop house and in the, in the um, and then also in the veggie garden I can see that there's a lot of benefit in there so it's almost like a let's call it a liquid fertilizer but in a, a slurry form so I'm hoping that this this process actually does come together um, I, I can certainly see that because we're using a lot of potash as well, is that the charcoal itself, which will be inoculated, will also be that source for later on. So I'm thinking that it's almost like a two-pronged attack. I'll have that, that slurry, which will be that instant, almost like a fertilizer tea or fertilizer mud, if you want to call it per se. And when the time comes, the vegetables can then start tapping into that charcoal source um, biochar so it's almost like a prolonged period of time that would be able to benefit from this biochar itself now I've got my had my trusty stick here and I've been stirring it all up so and what what I'm finding is that the the charcoal itself obviously floats because it's so lightweight, but that will then, as I stir it, and I've been stirring it sort of every couple of days, is that that's sort of mixing up like a big cake. But look, come over and have a look. I'll take this out. And you can see what we've got going on. You can see that the, the charcoal's now just sort of floating on top. I'm not sure what it's really meant to be looking like, but I'm going to get it to the point where... You can see, you know, I still have a lot of fluid in there. So I'm just gonna keep on adding and adding and adding my, um, all my charcoal and, and things like that. Um, you know, every couple of days. And I'm, you know, what am I up to? I'm, this is probably around about maybe my fourth load into this biochar or into this comfrey tea. Um, so, look, I'm probably thinking that there's maybe another, another month of adding, 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 and getting that to the, some sort of consistency that I, I think is right. Um, I haven't really seen what people have done um, when they started loading the, the biochar into the vegetable garden or, or things like that. So I haven't seen that consistency. But I imagine that needs to be a little bit thicker. Because, I, like I said, I'm going to be using a lot of that potash as that instant sort of fertilizer per se. 
and then the charcoal then later on um, will be something that the plants can then um, obtain their nutrients and, and everything from at a, at a later date once that initial sources has gone. So, have no fail. I have been working on my biochar. It's only that the weather has been letting me down. And I thought I'd give you a quick intro about how I'm getting that sorted out. And maybe, look, you know, for, for a lot of people in on smaller plots or whatever it may be and don't have those facilities for a larger bonfire or something like that um, in their yards or whatever, this may be the perfect solution for you. And to be honest, it's working for us, you know, like I, I, I'm really pretty pumped up that we're, we're moving forward on our biochar. So, all about adding your charcoal or carbon to your comfrey tea for inoculation a little bit longer because we are taking it from the our oven and also our um our heating source like and subscribe and i'll see you soon